Fellas, hi, uh, this is a video for you uh, and for any ladies that might be watching, you're very welcome. Um, we're gonna, just gonna talk a little bit about what it is to be a man in a relationship, um, what God asks of us, expects of us, and we're also gonna talk about some of the, the challenges, I guess, the difficulties. Um, so I've been married for just over nine years um, and it's been amazing. It's been uh, an amazing journey. We felt God's grace in it for uh, so many times when we've just really needed him to break in and help us in our marriage. So it's not been plain sailing, but I think what we've noticed is that as we've um, invested in it and as we've asked God to help us and really be that, that, that person who brings us closer together and to work through particularly the more difficult times, that he's just completely come alongside us and he's just so with us and we just feel so blessed by that. And the thing I point I want to start on before I get into scripture is that is that so much of our time we worry about the, the the will of God. Are we following what God wants for us? You know, is this the person that maybe God wants us to marry or God wants us to date? Or is this the job we're meant to take or the place we're meant to live or uh, all these sorts of things? How am I meant to react to this situation at work? Whatever it might be. But actually there's something in scripture called the revealed will of God, which is not a... Uh, you know, what about this or what about that or what happens here, or what happens there. It's the revealed will of God that talks about the things that he intends for you as a man uh, in a relationship to lead and to do really, really well. But there's also his revealed will that he wants you to succeed as a husband, as a boyfriend. If you're a single guy, he wants you to succeed in relationships. If that's something that's really on your heart and you want to get into uh, dating and relationships and marriage, like he wants you to succeed in those things. So his grace is already there and it's, and it's something that you can call on throughout all of your, your relationship and your, your married life. It's there and it's waiting for you. And that's just so important to remember that God's grace is for you and you don't have to fight him for it. You don't have to fight him for the power to be a good husband or a good boyfriend. It's there for you. Okay, so with that kind of context in mind, I'm going to look at five quick points from 1 Corinthians 16, uh, verse 13 to 14. And it says this, it says, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong and let all you do be done in love. It's five things there we're going to look at. The first one is watchfulness and there's two elements to it. One is to be watchful over your own life, that is your own uh, purity, that is your own thought life, what is in your heart. Uh, you know, scripture says that out of the heart flows the wellsprings of life. It's so important to protect your heart and make sure, as we said in the first video, that your heart is right before God. You know, Jesus makes you righteous. His grace covers all of your sin. But in order to come with a right heart before God and to seek him, it's so important to acknowledge areas where we're just really not doing as well as we'd like to do. OK, so that's the first part. But there's also being watchful over your relationship as well. And you do this really in partnership with your with your with your partner, uh, with your spouse or your girlfriend. And it's just to be watchful over what is coming against your relationship. It says in um, 1 Peter 4.12 that we should not be uh, surprised when, when we're persecuted for our faith. And it's just like that with marriage. We shouldn't be surprised when things come against us if we're trying to lead a godly relationship and trying to live in that way. Okay, so be watchful. Act like a, almost a watchman at the gates. You're seeing what's coming towards the city. You're, you're, you're looking out for potential dangers. That's what a watchman is. And, and we as men are meant to, along with our wives in partnership, watch over our relationships really, really well. But I encourage you to lead that. I'd encourage you to lead that. Okay. The second one is to stand firm in the faith. Now, when we talk about standing firm in the faith, it makes me automatically think of Ephesians 6, where God says, I've given you this armor. You're battling not against, you're battling against powers and principalities, not flesh and blood. And just to be aware that there is a spiritual battle over your relationship and that when the, you are leading and when you're in this relationship, it's so important to stand firm in the faith. Now, it says in Ephesians 6 that you fight the battle you stand your ground, but at the end, you also are standing. And it's so important as us, as, as, as men, and in our relationships to be standing at the end of the battle. And we do that all through God's grace and his armor that we pull on every single day. The third one is to act like men. And it, it, it may be easy to think of kind of the, the stereotypical type A, macho bravado, chest bumping, high-fiving, whatever it might be. 
Um, but what God is saying here, well, sorry, what Paul is saying here, what God is saying through Paul, I should say, is that actually he's not calling us to conform to a particular type of masculinity. What he's asking us to do is to be mature in our faith. He says elsewhere in much of his writing that we're not to be like babes or babies, only, only sufficient to be fed milk, but actually we need to grow to a place where we can receive solid food from God. And that's really an encouragement towards maturity. And he's saying exactly the same here, it's to be mature. Now, maturity in scriptural terms is different to maturity in worldly terms. In the world, the more mature you become, the more independent you become. Whereas in scripture, in the kingdom, the more mature you become, the more dependent you come. So we're seeking dependence on God, not independence from God. Now, Jesus said, I only do what the Father tells me to do. I only go where the Father tells me to go. He was so dependent on the Father, but yet he was the perfect example of masculinity. So that's what we're trying to reach. We're trying to reach a mature dependence on God. And the second thing about maturity is that when we have maturity, we receive vision. So you cannot be a mature leading a relationship without a vision for your relationship. This is, this is what I get from Jesus as well. Like he had the perfect example and this, this, uh, this mission for his life. You know, on the cross, he said, it's finished. He said, it is finished. It's like his mission that he'd come to do, this, the taking the sin on his shoulders and taking everything we'd ever do on his shoulders. That was finished at the cross. That was his mission. His vision was to see a church and a people dedicated to God, free from the burden of sin. That was his vision. And I want to ask you, what is your vision for your relationship? If you don't have a vision for your relationship, if you can't see where it's going, I love you, you just need to get before God and ask him. And just ask him, would you show me what the vision for my relationship is? And when I talk about vision, I'm, I'm not talking about, you know, where we're going to live or what house we're going to have or cars or children or, or, or all of those earthly things. What I'm talking about is, Lord, what is the kingdom destiny of my relationship? Where do you want this relationship to head? Now, I know for me and my family, uh, my vision for our family is that we would grow old serving God. And that's it. It's very simple, very succinct, very simple. But we, we will serve the Lord. I want my children to serve God. I want them to love him. And I want him to have a really close relationship. I want, him, I want them to know that he's real. So we practice that. We practice acknowledging the reality of God. Thank you, God, that you are here. Thank you, God, that you healed today. Thank you, God, that you did these things. And in my relationship, I want, I want that same thing. I want us to live intentionally with a clear vision that we are gonna serve God and we're gonna love God and we're gonna try and reach out and impact as many people as we can along the way, okay? So it's so important to have a vision for your marriage as well, all right? Or your relationship as well if you're, if you're, if you're dating. Number four is to be strong. Now, this is really not just a, a question of um, a question of how big your muscles are or how much you go to the gym or whether, you, whether you're on the protein powder or any of those things. What this is about is what is the source of your strength. Now, I was once at a, at a conference and I was involved in setting up and I had no clue about, I've got no clue about lighting and audiovisual, any of that sort of stuff. But I plugged in the power to the light, big spotlight into the same extension cord that the sound desk was running from. And I didn't know this is a no-no, but the sound started going all haywire and they were trying to practice. And the guy came over and we said, no, no, you can't put the power for the light in the same place as the power for the audio. It just doesn't work like that. It's so important to know the source of the power that you are plugging into and the source of the power over your life. As a man leading a relationship in a marriage or a dating relationship, the source of your power is the grace of God. Now, John Piper talks about grace as the pardon and the power, that there is the grace to forgive, but there's also the grace to empower us to live the life that he wants us to live. So the source of your strength must be the grace of God. And know this, that when you're at your weakest moment and you're really, really struggling, God's grace is there to help you. And actually, in your weakness, his power is made perfect. So being weak and being slightly, I don't know, you're maybe missing the mark on a particular area of your relationship, or you're not doing well in a particular area, you ask God's grace to come in, it will come in. Because he's there and he wants you to succeed. 
The fifth one and the last one is to do everything in love. And I, I, I mean, this is just an amazing statement for men, isn't it? To do everything in love. Now we feel to, to be men that we need to do so many things and, and we've got so many responsibilities and we do. And, and God's grace is there for us, for them. But to do everything in love is the most important thing in terms of the way we act towards others. You know, Jesus says that actually when we love, we really reveal him. He, says to, he said to the disciples, when you love each other, you will show that you are my disciples. And when we love people, we reveal Jesus to them. And, and actually my job is to love my wife and to reveal Jesus to my wife and to my kids and to my friends in my workplace. And my role is to reveal the love of Jesus. So everything I do must be done in love. And I'm not perfect. Like I raise my voice sometimes. I, I get annoyed, frustrated sometimes. But my heart is set towards that, that I want to do everything in love. And it's so important, again, going back to the first point, that the direction of our heart is in the right place. You know, we're called as men we're called to love our wives like Christ loves the, church, loves the church and gave himself up for them. And the wife is called to submit. And this is an interesting one, but both men and women submit in relationships. The, the woman, it says in scripture, is called to submit to the man. And how that plays out in marriage is, is, is grace-filled as well. But the man is also called to submit. The man doesn't submit to the wife the man submits to death. Death to themselves, death to their own desires, death to the, what they want out in life. It's not that your family follow you into your heart's desires, it's actually your call is to lay everything down for your family, for your relationship, for your wife. And it's that mutual submission that really enables marriage to work and relationships to work so well. And I wanna ask you, what's, what's easier? to submit to a person or to give everything up for someone else. It's this really interesting balance that scripture talks about of Jesus' example and what men are called to do. But when you get that right, it is amazing because the wife feels loved and honored and your children feel well led. And actually the grace of God, because you've shown such humility, humility releases God's grace and the grace of God is on your relationship and on you at that moment. These are big things, these are hard things, and I, I get that. I, I fall short on many of these things often, but I know, as I said at the beginning, that God's grace is for me, like he wants me to be a good husband. He wants me to lead my family well. I, I really hope this video encourages you as a man and blesses you so much, and so much love from us here in the UK and London. Bless you guys.